One of the quotes from the Course that I really like is, Love cannot be far behind a grateful heart and a thankful mind. So that just kind of rolls out, you know, it's like, ooh, it's the love that we're all seeking to know that the Course tells us it's, uh, it's literally beyond what can be taught, but we can work at remo removing the obstacles to the awareness of love's presence. And so that's really where our focus is. And then as you clear the mirror of your mind from the attached thoughts and judgments and grievances, then the gratitude is there. It's not like something you need to have more of. It's just like it's already there, ready to radiate and shine just as you. You know, who you are is just a, a grateful presence, a grateful living presence, but it's just covered over by these judgments and grievances and attack thoughts. So, so we'll talk quite a bit this weekend about, about removing those grievances and judgments, and we'll also talk about, about the trust that it takes to do that. Because as long as you are trusting in the ego, then you are reinforcing, or we might say perpetuating judgments and grievances, but when you withdraw your faith from the ego and you give it over to the Holy Spirit, then naturally those grievances and judgments start to fade away and they become less and less in your awareness. So, faith is not really a question of more or less faith, it's really what am I putting my faith in and we're going to be all about exposing the ego and, and really pulling our faith away from the ego and putting it into the spirit. And that would have to transfer too to all aspects of our mind, including things like, uh, sometimes people think of finances and relationships and there's various aspects of the human condition that, that seems to be Oh, well, I can pray to God for certain things, but there's certain things I can run a little bit better than God, so I'll run them on my own, and we find that doesn't really work. You can't really run some aspects of your life. That control of trying to be in charge of certain things is where the problem is. So it progressively takes a lot of faith to start to transfer the training. And, um, yeah, it's for me, it's, it becomes... Uh, an involuntary life, in the sense that miracles are involuntary, you, you really do give over control of your life and the direction of your life. Like after this week, I'm heading to China, and uh, last year I went to China for the first time, and um, yeah, I was, I was telling Frances, because she was asking me, and I said, no, I'm definitely not feeling China, not feeling China. And then we we got this uh, email that from a friend of ours in China who just said, um, "Oh, tomorrow I have to talk with you on Skype. It's so important. Um, it can't be done over the email. It's it's a big surprise. Uh, it's just big news and everything." And so we waited the next day. We got on Skype and and he told the story of of a meeting, a Course in Miracles meeting over in China in Beijing where. They were discussing the possibility of me coming, and and there was one gentleman who heard that possibility and just started jumping up and down like a Mexican jumping bean all over the room. And the people just got really curious when they saw this man jumping all around. And like, who is this? There suddenly was this great enthusiasm for me to come and visit China just because this man was jumping up and down. And when we heard the story, it was so touching. Our hearts were so touched by this that we were like, okay, we're going to China. <laughs> and it was just really glorious. Uh, the, the people were just so open and warm, and you know that's where we're heading after this little trip here in Northern California. But, but you know, it's, you don't really have a sense of control over your life when you give your life over to God. You just are willing to be used in any way and that is really gorgeous. It's beautiful when it, you just kind of get into the rhythm of that and the flow of that. So this weekend will be a very, very practical weekend. I want you to just raise up any kind of questions, ask for examples. If we talk about some principles and we use some examples and you say, mm, still don't get it. Give me another example. Try another example. or 
come at it from another angle, whatever, whatever it takes. Our goal is to have clarity and to go deeper and deeper into that peace of mind that is our natural inheritance. So that's really what, what guides these gatherings. It's the, it's the question from the heart. It's the deep desire for healing. It's the, the part of our mind that just says, you know, there must be a better way. I'm willing to just fall to my knees and be shown. You know, the prayer of the heart is really uh, revealed to me my greater good, reveal to me my true self, my true identity. And we just open up and we go deep into that prayer and uh, that becomes our living practice. Recently I've been saying that the spiritual journey is like, it's over 99% practice and it's 1% or less principle. Because I think a lot of us are really on to the principles. You know, we've been on to those for some time. But the actual practice of that and the transfer of that to all aspects of our life, that's where I think we can come together and really help each other uh, by showing each other the ways that really work, the ways that we've found that really work. So we have uh, some music we're going to play this weekend. Um, we also have the beautiful TV screen and some uh, video clips. My friend Jason Warwick is actually working today on uh, a new little uh, video montage. So we always we have a little movie making going on simultaneously while we're starting here Friday night, and we should be able to have a few montages I think that that come in that are help us out as well. So I just wanted to welcome everyone and. I'm here at your service to join with you uh, over this weekend and to really answer your questions and, and uh, as I said, go into this in a, in a very careful way just to really, really come together with this experience, this experience of peace of mind. So for me, it's life is, like they say, life's a bowl of cherries. You know, life does feel like a bowl of cherries. It feels like there's just being carried along and swept along in this uh, joy and clarity. And then when we come together, we, we share it. Uh, I always like to share that, you know, that from my awareness, there really aren't any real problems. And so oftentimes I come together with groups as I travel around the world and, and we'll start off with, uh, with this idea, does anybody have a problem? And then we, <laughs> we work it back to, you know, really take a close look at this. Like, is this a real problem? Or is this a, a problem of linear time, a problem of imagination, where our, we've run away with our ego imagination and we've, we've fantasized a lot of problems when we really cut down into the, the core of it towards the present moment, we really start to see we don't really have any problems. That's, it's easy to stay happy when you have no problems. <laughs> so that's what we're working on here, you know, is really working it back that way. So I just want to open it up to everyone. I'm here at your service to, uh, to dive into things and uh, it's just fun. It's, I'm really grateful being here again. Does anybody have any kind of topics or things they'd like to look at tonight? It does feel like, um, as we go along and we start to open to any kind of guidance, intuition, that, that we're, we have all these past ideas of, of what we should be doing. And we have a lot of, oftentimes, people who are willing to give us a lot of advice uh, and put their two cents worth in and so forth with all of these things. And, and inside, we have to really start to follow our passions and also our peace of mind in terms of what feels right. And what we seem to be doing in the world is really a backdrop for this mind training. At times we're going through some very, very intense periods of a lot of darkness coming up and a lot of unconscious um, emotions that are surfacing. and. It will seem like on the script we're kind of pulled back, we get a little break, we get a little reprieve from working or 
we take take time off either voluntarily or sometimes being laid off and so on and so forth but it gives us time to to work through these emotions so what seems to be going on in the script of our life in the dream world of our life is is just a backdrop to kind of work through those things and you know, it, we've grown up with goal setting and trying to achieve and master things and accumulate and so on and so forth. And the spiritual journey is really taking us in the other direction. It's more of a, like in that movie, I Heart Huckabees. It's more of a, of a dismantling of everything that we've known. And we we may go to gatherings like this or we may read books, but it's you know, sometimes we have these existential detectives like Lily Tomlin and Dustin Hoffman, and other times we just have people that uh, that act or dogs that <laughs> come into our life. <laughs> so it's in one sense, um, it's like we've done so much to try to make it in the world, and in one sense, the spirit's helping us, kind of uh, backing us, you know, deeper and deeper into our consciousness and into our mind and in this backing in we're just really stepping back from putting so much importance on the things of the world we're trusting that we'll be taken care of in ways that we can't imagine uh, so we're not putting so much emphasis on trying to figure things out but more wait for things to show up wait for things to be given wait for things to be obvious and that's a whole new mode of being, a whole new way of being. And learning to relax with it, you know, just to learn to see, oh, I'm taken care of. Oh, I didn't see that one coming. Oh, that's kind of nice. But for me, that was the biggest uh, difficulty was letting go of what I thought I knew, of uh, how I thought it was supposed to go. And even in terms of taking care of myself, which, you know, that was part of the conditioning, you, you take care of yourself look out for number one and so forth. Now we're, we're being taken back inward to the one uh, that we truly are. And it's just step by step by step. Uh, so for me, there was a lot of trust involved in letting go of trying to plan for myself or trying to run the show, trying to be in charge. It's not that we become completely passive in terms of behavior, but it's more in a, in a a mental state of receptivity that we're cultivating. So when the Spirit speaks to us, it gives us those little nudges, you know, we can pay attention and go for that. Because yeah. we were taught that we, there were times to be defensive, there were times to be aggressive, there were times to really stand up for ourselves, and yet the self that we were standing up for was still an ego self, a false self, yeah. So it's like we're just stepping back, 